The Four Tops will forever go down in music history as one of the main acts who helped to define Detroit's Motown sound of the 1960s. The members of the group met as high school students in the Motor City. Levi Stubbs and Abdul Duke Fakir attended Pershing High, while Ronaldo O.B. Benson and Lawrence Payton went to Northern High. They first sang together at a birthday party at the request of friends who had heard them sing separately. The combination worked and they decided to keep singing together. The following day, they met again at Duke's house and decided on the name The Four Ames and to market themselves as a jazz vocal quartet. In 1954, a talent agency started to book the group outside Detroit. They would sing backup vocals and open for other acts. Two years later, to avoid confusion with the Ames Brothers, a popular white male quartet, they changed their name to The Four Tops and in May 1956 recorded Kiss Me Baby, a one-off single for the Chicago R&B label Chess. They produced more unsuccessful recordings on a variety of other labels, but remained in demand on the nightclub circuit, singing jazz and pop standards. And by the early 60s, they were playing venues in New York and Las Vegas, usually supporting such stars as Billy Eckstein and Count Basie. Eventually, in 1963, they came to the attention of Barry Gordy Jr., a songwriter and entrepreneur who had already started to establish the sound of his new record label with artists like The Miracles, Marvin Gaye, Martha and the Vandellas, and The Supremes. That label was called Motown. The group were initially signed to the Workshop label, a jazz subsidiary, and started off providing backing vocals for the rest of the roster. They even recorded a jazz-inflected album that Barry decided not to issue. Barry ran his Detroit label like a factory and a family with everything in-house, stylists, choreographers, recording studio, musicians, and writers. The talents of one such writing and production team, consisting of Lamont Dozier and brothers Brian and Eddie Holland, would end up being behind many of the most successful hits on the label, including one sung by the Four Tops. In fact, the group's string of Holland Dozier Holland hits would begin with their very first Motown single. One night, while out at a local club to watch The Temptations perform, Brian Holland came up to the Tops telling him they had a song for them. Since it was 1.30 in the morning, he told them they could listen to it the next day. The group's response was, why don't we go into the studio tonight? Brian said okay, and after the show, they all headed back to Hitsville and recorded their first song on Motown that night. That song called Baby I Need Your Lovin' would be released in the summer of 1964, reach number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100, and get all the way up to number four on the R&B chart. Their follow-up single, Without the One You Love, Life's Not Worthwhile, just missed the pop top 40 chart, but Ask the Lonely did become a top 30 pop and top 10 R&B hit. All three tracks were included on the group's self-titled debut album, released in January 1965. Building off the momentum of it, the group would quickly release their second album towards the end of that year. That project would contain the Four Tops' very first number one in both the pop and R&B world. I Can't Help Myself, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, the lead single off the album, would become one of the group's most popular songs and also put them on the international map. The album's other two singles, It's the Same Old Song, Something About You, and Shake Me Wake Me When It's Over, also did very well on the pop and R&B charts. Their sound was truly distinctive. Most male groups feature a tenor as their lead singer, but Levi had a naturally lower baritone voice. Holland Dozier Holland chose to write songs for him in the tenor range, requiring him to strain a bit to hit the notes and giving his voice a stronger sense of urgency. They also wrote additional background vocals for Motown's resident session singers, the Andantes, on many of their songs to add a high end to the low voiced harmony of the tops. The group's third effort, titled On Top, and again released just eight months later in July 1966, put up only moderate numbers. Even the two albums that came on the heels of this project, a live album and greatest hits compilation fared better. Things would get right back on track and the group back to the top of the charts though with their next album. Reach Out, released in 1967, would contain the Four Tops all-time biggest hit and one of the most popular Motown songs ever, the title track. Reach Out, I'll Be There, not only reached number one on the pop and R&B charts in the US, it took the top spot on the UK chart too. This achievement set a precedence for the five other singles off the album, including Standing in the Shadows of Love and Bernadette. They all not only put up great numbers in the US, but they were a hit across the pond as well. The Tops were now the most successful male Motown act in the UK, while in the United States, 
They came in as a respectable second to The Temptations. The singles off this album also served as the last hits the Four Tops would enjoy from Holland Dozier Holland, who left Motown in 1967 after royalty disputes with Barry Gordy. Not surprisingly, without the superstar production trio, the hits became less frequent. A couple of years would pass before the group got another major hit in the form of 1970's It's All In The Game from the album Still Waters Run Deep. This album also served as inspiration behind label mate Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, the hit title track of which was co-written by Obie. In addition to their own albums, the tops were paired with the Supremes, who had just replaced lead singer Diana Ross with Gene Terrell for a series of albums beginning with The Magnificent Seven in 1970 and followed up by the return of The Magnificent Seven and Dynamite in 1971. Whilst the albums themselves didn't make much of a splash on the charts, the first one, The Magnificent Seven, did feature a top 20 pop and top 10 R&B version of Ike and Tina Turner's River Deep Mountain High. During this time, Motown as a company began to change. Older acts such as Martha and the Vandellas and the Marvelettes were slowly moved aside or dropped completely to focus on newer acts such as Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 and the now solo Diana Ross. In addition, the company moved its operations from Detroit to LA. It was all a part of Barry Gordy's grand plan to break into the motion picture and television industries. When the move was announced in 1972, a second announcement came with it. All its artists were expected to move as well. Many of the older Motown acts, already neglected by the label, opted to stay in Detroit, including the Four Tops. The Tops departed Motown for ABC Dunhill, and later one of their own, Lawrence Payton, began serving as a producer and writer. The group's first release on the label, 1972's Keeper of the Castle, off their album of the same name, was their first pop top 10 hit in five years. Follow-ups included mega hits Ain't No Woman Like The One I've Got and Are You Man Enough? Sweet Understanding Love, Midnight Flower, and One Chain Don't Make No Prison all also reached the R&B Top 10 between 1972 and 1974. The quartet then experienced another dry spell and subsequently left ABC. The Four Tops disappeared from the recording scene entirely for several years, until the early 80s. Signing a deal with Casablanca Records, they made a triumphant comeback in 1981 with the number one R&B hit, When She Was My Girl. By 1983, the Tops had rejoined Motown. They were featured on the company's 1983 television special, Motown 25, Yesterday, Today, Forever, taking part in one of the highlights of the show, a battle of the bands between the Tops and the Temptations, patterned after similar competitions Barry Gordy had staged during the 60s. The breathtaking medley and dance contest became one of the highlights of the joint tour the two classic vocal groups then undertook. The first of the Tops albums under their new Motown contract was 1983's Back Where I Belong. The project also united the members with the hit songwriting and production team of Holland Dozier Holland on some cuts. Sadly, they weren't able to create the same successful outcomes that they had in the past. Two years later, the next and last Motown release would drop titled Magic. The title track of 1988's Indestructible, released on Arista, would be the group's final top 40 hit. Another track, Loco in Acapulco, written and produced by British musician Phil Collins and former Motown composer-producer Lamont Dozier, climbed into the UK top 10 in early 1989. The foursome's Arista contract also provided them with the opportunity to couple Levi with fellow label mate Aretha Franklin. This pairing resulted in the 1988 song, If Ever a Love There Was, which did moderately well on R&B and adult contemporary charts. In December 1988, the group was scheduled to return to the US for Christmas on Pan Am Flight 103 after completing their European tour. A prolonged recording session and a performance at the British television show, Top of the Pops, caused them to oversleep and miss the ill-fated flight, which crashed in Lockerbie, Scotland, after a terrorist bomb was detonated on board. From the late 80s, the Four Tops focused on touring and live performances. On June 20th, 1997, Lawrence Payton died as a result of liver cancer. He was 59 years old. His passing came just two months after the group celebrated receiving a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His death also breaks an over four decades run for the Four Tops, who, unlike many other Motown groups, never had a single lineup change until then. Levi spoke to the LA Times in 1994 about how they managed to make it work for so long. There's been some rough spots because we're four different individuals and we're all grown men, but the proof is in the pudding that we're still here. I'm sure that if we got to the point where we couldn't be around each other, then we wouldn't be, but we don't have that kind of a group. 
We grew up together and we've been friends all our lives. I've been with the Tops longer than I've been with my family, and that's a long, long time. At first, Levi, Obi, and Duke toured as a trio, called the Tops, until the following year when they recruited former member of The Temptations, Theo Peoples, to restore the group to a quartet. By the turn of the century, Levi had suffered a stroke and had cancer. Ronnie McNair was recruited to fill Lawrence's position, and Theo stepped into Levi's shoes as lead singer. The group was featured in several television specials during this time, including Motown 45, and several by PBS, including a 50th anniversary concert dedicated to the group. The concert turned out to be bittersweet, as it featured a brief appearance of Levi using a wheelchair, as well as a memorial to Lawrence announced by Obi. Ronaldo Obi Benson appeared on only one more PBS special and died on July 1st, 2005 from cancer. Doctors only discovered the disease a few weeks prior during surgery to amputate one of his legs. He also had a heart attack during the operation. He was 69 years old. Lawrence's son would replace him. Levi Stubbs would pass away on October 17, 2008, at his home in Detroit after a long illness, at the age of 72. The group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1990, the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2005, and the R&B Music Hall of Fame in 2013. In 2022, the last four tops founding member, Abdul Duke Fakir, finally put pen to paper and published his memoirs at the ripe old age of 86. I'll Be There, My Life with the Four Tops is much more than just an autobiography though. As the title suggests, it is the story of one of Soul's best loved groups, but there's also insights into all kinds of behind the music drama. One issue that actually plagued many Motown groups was Barry Gordy's long harbored desire to have Levi, the lead singer and natural standout of the group, to go solo, or at least to rename the band with his name out front, the same way the Miracles and the Supremes did. Levi refused, even turning down a lucrative offer from Barry to feature in movies alongside Diana Ross. To him, the band, who were his lifelong friends, were what was important. Another juicy tidbit Duke touches on is the camaraderie that existed between the Motown stars, which in his case spilled over into a serious dalliance with Mary Wilson. At one point, they were even engaged. Sounds like a cute love story, right? One problem, Duke was already married for the second time with children. It's even been reported that they also lived together. Eventually, he did end things with Mary and his wife took him back. Duke also doesn't hold back about his addictions, cocaine, alcohol, gambling, the failure of his first marriage, and more. He ultimately pulls through with the help of a loving second marriage and by turning to God. Today, he continues on with his current bandmates, Ronnie McNair, Lawrence Payton Jr., and Alexander Morris. 